this is that opportunity that you guys have sort of been waiting for. Play a team like this, the offense they want to run, the way they want to throw the ball. Uh, in the build up to this, how much of the, how much excitement, how much enthusiasm is there from you all to break out this revamp pass defense against what they're going to try to do? Uh, I think we're really excited about it. I think the coach has already said it's a it's a challenge for us to to prepare for these guys, but that's why you, you get up and you go and play the game. Um, you know, we've been working, we've had a little extra time with the bye week to get prepared for it. So uh, we've been really focused in on it. They've got a really good group of receivers. Um, they might be some of the best receivers we'll see all year. So uh, we've got a definite challenge in that and how we're going to defend them. What tells you y'all are ready for this? I mean, what, what, what what's the barometer? Um, you know, you just got to see what you do out in practice and see how you prepare. I think that'll be the telling thing. Um, we took a really, a really good approach to last week. You know, guys weren't seeing it as time off; they were seeing it as an extra time to prepare and get better. So we got to carry that into this week. What is it that makes their wide receivers so effective, Joshua? Uh, just the fact that they have a group of them that are all pretty good. So uh, you can't just focus all on one. You have to be able to defend all of them. And then they've got the quarterback that can put the ball in a good place for them to make plays. So uh, we got to get a little pressure on him, too. When you guys play other teams from Ohio, do you notice that they play maybe a little bit more inspired with a little bit more emotion than maybe a, a you know, team from outside the state? Yeah, uh, you know, it's, it's always fun to get uh, a team, another team from Ohio, because a lot of the guys on those teams are from Ohio, too. And, you know, they all dreamed of playing here. So uh, you usually get their best shot from them. And Cincinnati is a really good school. So uh, it'll be the best two Ohio teams going at it. And so we've got to really prepare for them. I know that we're going to get a great shot from them. We've got coaches on our staff that have Cincinnati ties. So they know what to expect, too. And they're going to get us prepared for it. Josh, you're one of the uh, leaders on this defense. How do you uh, lift up a guy like Noah who's going through some stuff and it's still was practicing with you guys last week after that and you know what's the situation like just you know being on a defense with him now uh this is the time where you got to surround him with people who care and uh, you can't abandon him and i think that guys on our team understand um that you know he, he's dealing with a really tough thing in his life and that um you know we're going to get him help but to be around him i think has made a difference uh you know guys are looking after him you put an arm around him and you try to help him um, you know, it's, it's the most positive thing you can do. How's the spirits been, you think? Uh, pretty good. And, you know, going through something like that, I couldn't imagine. Uh, you know, he's got a lot to deal with. There's a lot on his plate, and people are saying, you know, some negative things about him, and he realizes it. But when he's surrounded by us and he gets around people that he knows care, um, you know, I think he becomes a little bit of a different person knowing that he's got these guys around him. Do you talk football with him or is that almost a distraction from what he needs to focus on right now? Uh, you know, we just, whatever he wants to talk to us about uh, in terms of if he wants to talk football, we'll talk football. But I think guys are just there to support him. I know that he's not practicing right now, but is he still around you guys a lot? Uh, you no, know, a decent amount. And guys will go out of their way to, to say hi to him or visit him at his apartment. Um, you know, I think it's the right thing to do. And we've got a, a group of guys, especially on our defense, who care a lot about him. So. Um, we want to be there to help him. Gunner Keel, when, when, when you hear the quarterback's name and his name's Gunner, what does that tell you first hand? <laughs> right off. It's, a, it's one of those names. It's like uh, there's that kid who I don't know what team he's on, but his name's Speedy. So. Yeah, Speedy Noyle. <laughs> yeah. It's like Gunner, he throw the ball around. So put some pressure on him. Um, you know, he's, he's looked pretty impressive in these first couple of games. Uh, so we'll have to find some new ways to maybe get after him a little bit. Um, you know, if they can't throw the ball out to some of those receivers that they have, you know, they might not be as effective. So um, just being able to, to find a way, you know, hopefully the stadium's really loud and getting us out a little bit. Does, what stands out about him, though, when the video you've watched of him, I'm talking about the quarterback, is it he'll just stand there, stand there, stand there, and just at the last second let it go? What, what just stands out about him? He, he doesn't do a lot of running, it doesn't look No, like. but um, he's a smart quarterback, and he's got a really good arm. And we watched some film yesterday, and I saw him make – one throw that was, uh, you know, pretty good looking on there. And I said, mm -hmm. you know, if he stands back there, he can make throws like that. So it's a challenge to the front seven as well as the back seven this week. We've got to be able to cover them, but we've got to definitely find some ways to get pressure. Josh, when, 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 when this new defense was <coughs> introduced to you guys in the offseason and spring and stuff, was, was there an, 
was there an actual like I don't know if y'all, I'm sure y'all didn't go yeah yeah but I mean you know what, what was it like I, I guess was there an excitement I guess in the room uh, that maybe things were going to change a little bit yeah and um, you know when you hear the word aggressive as a player that's something that is one of those buzzwords that you really get excited about so uh, you know when Coach Fick was talking about the new defense going in he said it's going to be really aggressive and all the linebackers said that's all we need to hear so um, you know preparing throughout the spring. Uh, knowing that we we're going to be an aggressive defense and going into summer camp, preparing, uh, it made it a little bit more fun. And, you know, you have more of a positive outlook than kind of, all right, well, if they do this, we're going to react to this. And when they get into this set, we're going to check to this. It's kind of like slow you down as a football player. And, and uh, you know, you can't just play as freely. They're gonna, if they go into this game, if they throw 40 or 50 passes, you go into the game almost knowing that they throw the ball at many times, they're going to hit a few. Yeah. And, as a defense, you can't just be upset that, oh, they hit one pass or they got us on one play. You got to be able to look forward to the next play and know that you're going to keep playing defense. The issues lie when they keep hitting big passes or, you know, their, their breakdowns, and that's what you don't want. But you definitely can't get down. You got to say, all right, maybe they'll hit a couple, but the next time we got to get after them so we can't do that. You alluded to this earlier. They have 12 different guys who've caught a pass, seven different guys who've caught a touchdown pass. What's the key to stopping a, a team like that that distributes the ball around that much? Um, just to be smart in the way you play and be able to recognize formations and, and maybe splits so uh, you can have an idea of, of what's coming before the play. Um, also, you know, you, like I said, if you get pressure on the quarterback and you can't throw the ball, then you won't have that issue. But, uh, you know, it's just a lot of it is, is game planning and, and making sure we know or have an idea of what they're doing so we can be more successful. I imagine that makes communication doubly important, too. How would you grade you guys in that category through your first three games? Um, there can never be enough communication, so that's always something that we can work on, and that'll be a big thing this week, and we're working on it during the bye week is, is just communicating formations so guys can get a, an idea of what to expect. What is your uh, view, you mentioned two best programs in Ohio here going out. <coughs> What's your view of the Cincinnati program? Uh, I mean, they've had a lot of success. Ohio State hasn't played them, but, you know, mm -hmm. BCS Bowls and stuff over the last five, six, seven, ten years. What, from afar, not playing them, what have you thought about uh, Cincinnati uh, football? They've had a lot of momentum in the past years, and uh, they've recruited pretty well, so they've got good players. And so um, it's one of those things where, you, you got to be excited, especially if you're an Ohio guy. Maybe you got recruited by them. Um, maybe you play for Cincinnati and you might have gotten recruited by Ohio State a little bit or you're just an Ohio guy. Uh, you get excited when you put Cincinnati and Ohio State together. Uh, you know, it's, it's a big game and it's a night game in the shoe. So uh, for them, I know they're going to be really pumped. And for us, it's got to be one of those games that uh, we go out there and we've got to give it our all knowing that they're going to come in with their best shot. You guys had a chip on your shoulder going in the Kent State game and it seemed to show. Mm -hmm. what, what's the chip on the shoulder this week? Is we got to go out there and prove it again, um, especially for our pass defense. And uh, people were really critical of that. Mm -hmm. Last year, uh, it's one of those chances to, to prove what we've done. And then, you know, last time we were out in the shoe for a night game, it didn't go the way we wanted it to. So we got to go back out there and prove what we can do. Talk about that criticism a little bit that you guys received last year. A lot of that criticism was directed at, at Luke, you know, a guy that you're pretty close with. Do you, go, do you go out there almost with the intent to play for a coach? I mean, is it that, not to sound cliche or corny, mm -hmm. but do you do you go out there with that mindset? Yeah, I mean, you go out there with a the little chip on your shoulder knowing that they're, they're talking about your coach. And then, you know, if you take pride in your unit, like Coach Meyer says, then you're going to go out there and play hard anyway, knowing that your coach is on the line a little bit. And so uh, we go out there, linebackers, definitely, we have a deep bond with our coach. And so I think that helps us play a little bit better. But at the end of the day, you just know you got to go out there and get the job done. Joshua, was it, was it ever, I don't know, at the end of the year last year, was it ever embarrassing the way teams were able to throw on you guys? What, what was, what's the word you would use to describe maybe sometimes the futility of stopping that team's passing attack? I mean, it was a little bit disheartening, I would say. <laughs> just going out there and um, you might have an idea what's coming or some guys are in position to make plays, maybe didn't make plays, or mm -hmm. you just have a big breakdown. And that's something you never want to see when you're on defense. So uh, kind of takes uh, the air out of things. It kind of makes you, you know, just 
you feel a certain kind of way going out there, mm -hmm. and they hit a big play on you, and it's happened before many times. So that's something that we hope to eliminate this year. That's so how you guys don't feel around more. here a lot, though. I mean, you don't. To hear an Ohio State player say that he felt disheartened, mm -hmm. you don't. You don't get the experience that here. No, that's that's something that we don't do here, and I mean we've done a great job. I think in most facets of the game of eliminating that. I think toward the end of last year, we just um, we didn't make the improvements that we needed to over the year, and it kind of showed. So uh, this year, we're working hard to make sure that doesn't happen. I mean, we spend a ridiculous amount of time, and guys on their own take an initiative to watch film and and you know grade themselves and be critical of themselves instead of just putting it all on the coaches. I think is a big difference from last year. Looking at the linebackers, just. You know, how would you describe Darren Lee's impact this year and just, you know, what he's like on and off the field? Uh, Darren's had a, a really big impact, and he's a guy who, um, you know, last year he went through it a little bit. And, uh, you know, I think it was a good thing for him to kind of have his eyes opened up and be able to work in and play football with the scout team just so he could learn the game a little bit. And you see what he's done this year. He makes big plays, and, you know, he's a guy who who's really explosive, and he's a trigger guy who goes. Um, and then off the field, he's one of those guys who's in the film room a lot, and so he's really knowledgeable about the game. And um, you know, we spend a lot of time around each other, and he's just, you know, a funny guy. He's always got energy, and sometimes you're like, Darren, you got to chill a little bit. <laughs> but a lot of the times it's good because you might come in here after a day of classes, and some of the young guys will be like, <sighs> and Darren's like, we got to go, and so he gets guys going. One more. Coach Hinton was just saying that this uh, team had three good days of practice during the off week. You know, sometimes with young teams, he doesn't, you don't see that mm -hmm. in his years of coaching. Where do you think that kind of came from? Just a hunger to get better for the squad or good leadership mm -hmm. or what kind of drew, drove you guys to make the most out of last week? I think it's a, um, a hunger to get better, but I think guys just really like playing <coughs> ball around here. And so when you go out and practice and you've got some time and uh, you can go ones against ones in 11 on 11 yeah. drills or you go inside drills, um, where you've got good on good, I think guys just really get amped up to do that. So um, when you have a team that loves to play ball and you got young guys who got a chip on their shoulder, they want to get better, you'll go out there on a bye week and have some good practices. They, they were saying this team really does like that, it seems like, the, that live, the live reps and stuff. That yeah. Guys, why, why is this team so into that? It's just a chance to play ball. I mean, if you come here and you are what you have said you are, everybody thinks you are, then when it comes to 11 on 11 live drills, you're going to be pumped up. Isn't that every team, though? I mean, I mean, it should be every team, but I don't know if you get that everywhere.